No, man, this is cool. It's good to be back, bro. It's good it to is. have you back, man. It's good to be back, bro. And I'm excited. And speaking of obedience, man, I just feel like the Lord has just been um, stewarding that over you uh, in this last season of even just as far as taking this trip. You know, it seems as if like, it's funny, I invited you, but I wasn't like pressing you to come here. You know what I mean? It was a very like spontaneous, like, yo, come through. Yeah. And then uh, I doubled down and said, like, come through again. Like, yo, you, you going to come or not? You know, and then... um. And then obviously we had some some mad Jesus moments as to get you here. So share a little bit with me about your experience in like coming here and, and what the Texas has meant to you so far, as well as just uh, the Church of Mercy culture and just like everything that's been happening with that. <laughs> we getting deep now. We're right? getting deep. You know, <laughs> all right, we got we got the basics out the way. We got the intros. We got a little audience in here now. We got Jess on the comments. So all right, buckle up. We 15 minutes in. Time to get real. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the little little small talk. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. So, you know, Texas, bro. Texas is on my heart because my boy, you're always on my heart. You're my best friend. So, you know, when I came, when I came to Texas the first time, bro, it was all love. You know, I visited you and your family when you guys got moved into that new house. And, you know, it was amazing. We did a podcast. We had Mikey here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, anytime we get together, bro, it's a celebration. So Texas is always on my heart, you know, never expected Texas to be anything more than just a place that I visited. Um, but you know, Texas started getting put on my heart uh, as a hub. And obviously we know Texas to be the Bible belt, you know what I mean? Of the, of the nation. And there's so many good churches here. You know, we we're talking with, uh, with your boy and I was, he was saying like, yo, like, bro, you, there, that you can just choose a church, like, you know, like literally roll the dice and choose one, you mm -hmm. know, and, and that's how many good churches are here. So, you know, I'm, I'm plugged in at a church right now in Miami and, you know, I, I feel very, uh, very good about it. I love my church. I love my fellowship and all that, but you know, the Lord started, you know, switching things around in which I started feeling like anxious and not a bad anxious, but like my, my spirit started leaping almost, you know, and it was like ready for the next thing. And I don't know if it was, it was me getting ahead of myself, but I believe to, it to be the Holy Spirit, you know, he starts to stir your heart. Um, and you know, he, he was doing so for a couple months now, you know, and, um, my beautiful, uh, fiance, you know, has a prophetic mantle, prophetic calling, you know, and she's really been, exercising that with faith, you know, and getting really, uh, really comfortable in that, in that, in that season. So, you know, the word came, bro, after you invited me from her and, you know, she was in worship one day, actually listening to Mercy Culture. It was actually a set that I had sent her a month ago before, you know, obviously she had the, the, the prophetic word. I sent you that too. Yeah, I sent you, you Yeah. I sent you that too. And so a month later, she ends up listening to it. And within the first like 10 minutes, the Lord told her, um, you and Ali are going to move to Texas um, for a season or, you know, indefinitely basically, uh, for ministry. And it's going to be, um, basically preparation that you need in ministry to, to be sent out into my calling and my purpose. So when I received that word, you can imagine, bro, like, you know, I've only been teaching the kids now for so many months and, you know, I feel like the Lord is elevating me even where I'm at now. So in Miami, right? you can imagine, yeah. yeah, you get that, that prophetic word and you're like, okay, Lord, like, you planted me here. I'm blooming here. And there's so much fruit. There's so much great things happening, but now you're calling me somewhere else. And mind you, I'm still a baby in my faith. Like I've only been saved now, maybe going on three years now, like born again, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, this is definitely like one of the more crazy, crazy testimonies. And I mean, it's crazy to actually be talking about it because I'm in the midst of a you testimony are, yeah. season right now. So I don't want to release everything, but you know, received the word, started praying into it. And I said, Lord, like, I, I just give you permission, Lord, to just have your way in my life right now. You know, um, I, I am completely submitted to whatever you want to do. And, you know, I will say from the beginning of my faith, that's been something that the Lord has instilled in me is just radical obedience. And what that looks like is just walking out in a way that it's, it's, it's just honoring what God says, you know, yeah. and I didn't even know like the person I, I would marry would have a prophetic gift, you know, like the Bible says to, to, to pray for the gift of prophecy, you know, how special is it that when you meet someone who has the gift of prophecy, but I mean, the Lord literally, like I have a personal prophet now, you know, yeah. that's, it's so special, but, um, yeah, man. So that word came in prayed about it. The Lord, um, impressed on my heart to plan a trip. He, she, he doubled down and, and sent her another prophetic word that we needed to, you know, literally buy our flights and go, mm -hmm. uh, at the end of October, which is now. And, you know, we, uh, we just stepped out of faith and said, Lord, if they gave me the time off, I'm coming. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, they did. And, uh, here we are, bro. And ever since we've been here, bro, it's just been revelation after revelation, confirmation after confirmation. And yeah, man, it's, it's, um, it, it's interesting how the Lord moves, you yeah. know, because it's, it's really upside down kingdom, you know, in, in the way of like, 
the way that you would expect things to come into fruition, they, they, they don't like God is just like so drastically different than even our understanding or conception of like how things should work, you know? And yeah, bro. So here we are. Uh, the Lord called me to mercy culture after listening to the worship set. I received deliverance actually through that, that, um, you know, that, that, uh, worship set that I had sent over to her and you. Mm -hmm. And, um, man, I just, I just stayed on the scripture, Simon O Simon, you know, Satan has asked you, asked to sift you out like wheat. And that was like well, ba the basis of the song. Yeah. Fortify and my faith. Fortify my yeah. faith by mercy culture. And, you know, bro, it, it just transitioned into like me getting mass deliverance from that. Like I would listen to it for a week and it was the first time that I'd ever been in a place of worship and just was weeping, weeping, weeping. And I felt things that were leaving me, bro, leaving me, you know, struggles that I'd had, um, you know, it was much lighter after, you know, listening yeah. to that song. And I had never really gone through deliverance, you know, I follow a lot of deliverance ministers and, and, uh, you know, you kind of see this crazy picture of like demons being casted out of people and stuff. And though that's real, you know, everyone's experience is different. You know, I didn't have that experience of demons. You just being, had weeping and just, you felt yeah. it, felt that leaving your body and exactly. like felt it leaving the physical. Yeah. yeah. And, and it was crazy is I had been, I had been crying out to the Lord to deliver me. Um, from certain things like pornography and, and these type of addictions that, you know, a lot of men deal with and crying out consistently to him. And it was the third time that I called out to him and said, Lord, take this away from me. I already am at a place where I hate what you hate and I love what you love because he's already given me mm -hmm. that heart posture. But Lord, like Paul says, like I cried out to him three times and, you know, obviously he told Paul his grace is sufficient, but I was like, Lord, like this needs to go, you know, and it went, bro. You know, the Lord f like fully delivered me and, you know, it, it hey. became like, just like that, you know, but. And then, you, then, um, tell the people, man, you got baptized. Yeah. Uh, in that same kind of season, right around that time that all that was going down. So like yeah. share your little bit of experience with that. And just cause you've been baptized before for salvation, but it seems like you got baptized for deliverance on this go around to be like wiped clean and anew. Yeah. Well, it, the, the baptism wasn't so much deliverance as much as it was like an anointing falling on me, a new okay. anointing, a fresh anointing. Um, of the Holy Spirit and what the Lord, you know, now wants to do, you know, through my vessel. And, um, you know, after receiving that deliverance, I, I began to like really talk to some of the leadership there. And, you know, I'm obviously I'm leading the kids. So, you know, we're planning baptism and, you know, baptism is so exciting, bro. Like, man, just seeing people give their life to Jesus tomorrow, it's, it, it will never get old. I don't think no. I'll ever not stop getting emotional about it. Like, it's such a spiritual act, such a beautiful act. And I feel like, yeah. man, there's angels that are literally like, on deck, like worshiping right. and in and, and, and the presence of, you know, watching us, you know, and it's, it's a special, special thing. So yeah, we're preparing for that. And, um, you know, my leader, uh, David, yeah. uh, I talked about this on my last podcast. If you guys want to check it out, episode 17, but, um, he'd asked me, Hey, like, have you, he texted me, he was like, Hey, have you prayed into getting baptized? And I'm like, bro, like you're part of my testimony. I've been baptized already. So I, I ended up partnering with like a spirit of offense because I'm like, bro, why is this guy asking me to like get baptized again? Like, does he not think I'm bearing good fruit? Maybe, uh, you know, he thinks I went off the deep end. Like, <laughs> what's going on, bro? Like, you know, and, um, and you know, thankfully, bro, I went back to the Lord and I was like, Lord, like if I'm wrong about this and like, I don't need to be offended, like I, I, I leave room for you to correct me, you know, and um, he did that, <laughs> you know, we wow. got there uh, that day and, you know, I was still walking in pride that day because I'm like, I'm not getting baptized, like. You know, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm not getting baptized. So I pull up in jeans and a, and a t-shirt, bro, you know, ready to like, you know, help these, these kids and everybody who's getting baptized. So I get there, David pulls up, I pull up and, you know, I, I was still walking to pride, pride and, uh, you know, he says hello and I was kind of like <laughs> reluctant and kind of treating him a little, you know, a little, little, like a little not salty. gently, a little saltiness. Right. And, uh, we get there. The first thing the pastor says when he gets on the stage is, in a Jewish wedding, when two you know uh, Jewish people are getting married, the day before they get married, they get baptized, mm. and then so that was like the first hit, and I was like, "Ooh, that hurt." <laughs> I was like, "Oh man, Lord, I think there's something, there's I something repent. more." Yeah. I repent, no, I, I literally started repenting right there, and I was like, "Lord, all right." So things are progressing. David comes up to me, talks to me. He can see that things are off. So he asked me, he's like, hey, brother, like, I hope, like, are you okay? Like, are we good? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, we'll talk later. We'll talk later. He's like, well, I, and he humbled himself. You know, I'm so thankful that, you know, I'm around individuals who know how to deal with conflict resolution and honoring the God while they're doing that, you know? And so he humbled himself and said, brother, like, if I said anything that like, you know, offended you, I'm sorry. And that once again, softened my heart again. And so for the listeners out there, like, this is, this is the way that we should be, you know, as Christians is like, 
we need to always walk in gentleness and meekness. You know, even when we have disagreements with somebody, like that's an opportunity to exercise a fruit of the spirit. That's right. And it was beautiful because, you know, you know, David was so gentle, bro. And I mean, you're, we're looking right now at like, you know, the, the conclusion of it and it's beautiful. Right. But yeah. I gave permission to the Lord to convict me. So we get out there, bro. And one of the kids that I pastor on Thursday nights, um, coming out of the lifestyle of, of Mormonism, you know, religion. And, uh, you know, his dad was really like pestering him about not getting baptized. So I go up to him and the Lord was already working on my heart to get baptized, but like, I'm trying to fight it. I'm like, yeah. oh man, I, this is not me. It's not for me. So I go to him and I'm like, hey, like, what's going on, bro? Are you going to get baptized or not? And he's like, oh, I don't know, man. He has his head down. And I said, hey, brother, the Lord has been convicting me. I think if you go in faith, I'm going to get baptized with you. And he looks at me and like, mind you, I've only been teaching for like two months now. He's like, but you already been baptized. And I'm like, yeah, but like the Lord's calling me right now to get baptized again. Hey. Bro, the, he looks at me. The kid looks at me. He looks at the water and looks down. He gets up, bro, runs to the water, bro. Runs to the water to get baptized, bro. Hey. Everybody's cheering, cheering him on, bro. He gets in the water. He receives deliverance. You know what I mean? And the water starts crying, weeping. First person that meets him out is me. Give him a big old hug, crying. We're celebrating. And I was like, it's my turn now. You know, and I get in the water. David sees me. Mind you, David and I had a really Dark brief day, conversation. Yeah. David starts weeping, bro, crying. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm just sitting there. We're having a moment, bro. Cause it's like so beautiful. The combination of like taking offense to it and, you know, being rude and, you know, and it's just like, wow, you know, so we get in the water, I get baptized, bro. And it was just as special as the first time, you know, I'll never forget that moment. And, um, man, bro, that's just what radical obedience looks like, bro. It yeah. doesn't always have to make sense. Right. And sometimes as Christians, we need to reserve the right to not know the reason why. That's right. You know, it's okay to be led by the Lord. It's okay to be led by the Holy Spirit and realize that maybe we'll get the answer later. But if we ev never do, it's okay. That's right. God is still in control. He's still working things out for our good. You know, he still cares for us deeply and the plans are to prosper us, mm -hmm. you know? So that was a testament to that. Thank you so much for supporting our YouTube channel. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe and smash that like button. If you would like to see another short clip from this episode, you can do so here. Or if you want to see the full conversation, you can do so here. And make sure you subscribe on Patreon. If you'd like to partner with us, you can do that. The link in the description of this video. Thank you so much. And we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.